vulnerable in the poorest segments of society are, 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 are taken care of. Um, can I just ask Ian to say a few words on the NIS? Because the viability <coughs> success of the fund is a very important aspect. I'm going to make a very simple point. It makes no sense being on the right track if you stay put, the train will run you over. We as a team have sat and we have looked at what is necessary to bring us out of this situation. We are tackling four very critical problems at the same time. But we are tackling them not from the point of view of taking a cutlass, but taking a scaffold to seek to adjust and we structure our economy in such a way that we don't have a short-term fix that gives us back something today. But four or five years down the road, we are on that cycle, that treadmill where we go to one restructuring after another restructuring after another restructuring. We, we have looked at, we have learned the lessons of the Jamaican exercise, and we have no intention of going there. This program, therefore, is one that looks to fix the fundamental problem that we face. And the fundamental problem that we face is a problem in which our economy is not fit for purpose, our government <coughs> is not fit for purpose, and our structures are not 21st century structures. So we could go the route that has been suggested, take the, the act as you would like, cut off, 4,000 people and say, we have fixed it. But that's essentially chopping off a leg off a, a overweight person and, and say that you have fixed them. They still got the diabetes. They still got the hypertension. You have to fix the fundamental underlying problem. And that is what we are doing, fixing the fundamental underlying problem. And we have thought to do that in a very phased and structured manner. The first manner dealing with what we can accomplish within the, the first six months, what we can accomplish within the next 12 months, but we are not waiting to uh, uh, tackle the issues that need to be addressed in 12 months' time by starting in 12 months' time. We are starting with those No, It is not going to be a painless exercise. So if we want to get out of this and expect that there will be no pain, we will be fooling ourselves. And the reason we are here today is essentially to say to Barbados in a very candid and frank manner, this is the situation that we find ourselves in. We have done the diagnosis. These are the things that we need to do to fix it. And this is the time period over which we intend to fix it. We are advisors. We make recommendations. Those recommendations now need to be agreed upon, and those need now to be agreed upon by the Cabinet of Barbados. We expect, given the long hours, the intense discussion, the robust <laughs> arguments that we have had, that the plan can stand the test of time and the scrutiny of public inquiry, but more so the inquiry of those professionals out there who, like, all Barbadians like to quarterback on a Monday morning to tell you what is the perfect solution. Well, there is really no perfect solution in life. What we have done is to look at it and to assess it and to make our best judgment. But the most critical, important thing you have not asked about, and the most critical and important thing is going to be the implementation over the next four years. And that is going to require all of us, not this economic team, but all of us to roll up our sleeves and dig deep and work very hard if we expect to go to this. Otherwise, we are going to be in this for at least another generation. I ain't got no children, so when they drop date, <laughs> it's done. But there are persons out there, like my friend Kevin. You got two sons, right? Yeah. <laughs> How many you got? How many you got? Sons. Sons. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but we need to address this now, otherwise we are putting in jeopardy the future of all mm -hmm. Barbadians mm -hmm. 
but more importantly, the future of the young, the youth, and the future of the aged. You all know I come for Social Security. I have spoke to these issues on more than one occasion because I saw what was happening. I understand the health of Social Security is highly correlated with the health of the macroeconomy. So then a quick fix. Uh, all of us have essentially to roll up our sleeves, <coughs> carry the, the, the weight that needs to be carried, and understand that the road ahead is going to be tough, but that we remain focused, determined, and resolute that we will get to where we intend to get to. Otherwise, we really spend a thought in mother. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't spend thought in what I don't play many games. <laughs> No, we are, we are not cutting back on education or health. Actually, what we are looking at in terms of health is essentially trying to get help on a financial footing that it can stand. Because, let me be frank, the Barbadian population is the Asian population. And the real elephant in the room is addressing the, the demographics that we have in terms of that Asian population and providing for them. While they are not going to be productive members of society in terms of going out to work, they still have needs. They still, and their needs are going to be particularly acute as they get closer and closer to the departure lounge. And we know that we have to take care of our elderly because those are the persons who build this society. Yeah, I just Governor? want to go back to on the question of arrears because the, f the fundamentals remain the same whether you're in or outside of a program, and that is your ability to uh, service or expenditures is dependent on the availability of financing. That is why you will see in the program that a key element of the program actually is for us okay, to have agree. fiscal surpluses which will be complemented by the drawings that we get from, let's say, the IDB and the CDB. But the, and that is what is going to help to finance the reduction in arrears. But clearly, you cannot uh, reduce the arrears faster than you have available uh, financing. financing. <laughs> and that is a critical element. It, you know, the reason why we have built the arrears in the past is because there was inadequate financing. And now we have to make sure that the f overall fiscal is strong enough at all times to be able to cover. But as Dr. Greenwich mentioned, a critical element of the program is that those arrears have to be eliminated during the course of the program and that there will be no further buildup of arrears. And that's why uh, we have to manage our expenditures generally very carefully and also look at the whole quality of our tax administration to make sure that we are able to generate the revenues that are necessary to finance the expenditures in the program. And to add to what the governor just said, last Tuesday I called all of the accounting officers, both in terms of central government and statutory corporations, to a meeting to make sure that they will be reporting on their financial situation, particularly their receivables and their payables, on a real-time basis but at least that we shall have that information by the fifth day of the previous right. of the following month to allow us to determine if having made resources available to, to eliminate awareness going forward that persons weren't building awareness unknown to the ministry because that is what happened in the past and we don't intend to repeat that error going forward. So they have to report. They have to report by the 5th of the following month. And they're going to report not only the usual balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow, but the receivables and the payables, because this is not a situation that we can take chances and have surprises by persons going off and making obligations and commitments that the ministry is on the way of. I'm not going to get an honest answer to you because this might sound political, but it's definitely not. A lot of what you're saying and what everyone has been saying here and, and these Martin and so on about efficiency and management and people accounting and accountability, I thought that Barbara's used to be like that. 
was it like that at one point, or has it always been this before that seems to be described over the last you, you seem to be asking me a political question. Well, I'm sorry, it's not political. <laughs> I ask you from your experience. But I, I, will, I, will, I will say to you that I have been in the public service now, this is 38 years. And the only time I have seen the level of fiscal indiscipline exercise is over the last eight or so years, and in particularly last five years. There was, a, there was a time in Barbados where no government institution, whether it be a state enterprise or central government, could have gone off and created the obligation for government without the express approval of the Ministry of Finance. That fell down. And that's why I call that meeting, because we are not going to be having that situation going forward. Well, um, I'd like to thank the economic team. Um, I one question, sorry. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the IDB and the CDB already giving their um, indication that they would assist. Can you say what you've been hearing from the IMF so far, or, and, or if you're hopeful or confident about getting the stamp of approval when we go? And that's why we've worked so hard over the last couple of months. So, um, If we did not have that hope, this work would be in vain. So, Of course we do. Um, I would like to thank the economic team for making Barbados more aware of the circumstances confronting the country. In fact, <coughs> prior to coming to government, we had some idea of the difficulties, but it must be said that we did not anticipate the level of arrears that we have seen and the level of inefficiency that we have seen across institutions of government um, since coming to government. And it may appear to be a difficult journey that we are on, and it is, because I think we have outlined the circumstances. But I also think that the effort of leadership that has been made and the attempt at management across the public sector so far inspires not only me, but I think the entire team, because I do think that we understand that we are at a particular juncture. We're at a period when, if we don't take control of the circumstances that have confronted us, then the future that we want will not be a sustainable future. But the efforts have been made in terms of workload. I can tell you that I have never seen, and I, I don't think there's anyone here who has ever seen this kind of work. And some of the public servants can testify to that, the long hours that we've been engaging in, um, the kind of consultation that we have had across the board with the social partnership. And it all has to do, and I'll end on this, with leadership. You cannot see circumstances confronting you and ignore them. And what we had in the last couple of years in Barbados has been a failure to recognize that we were not on the correct path. But while it is a challenge, it also presents us with great opportunity to make a real difference to the future generation of Barbadians. And in that, in that light, I think that all of us who have so far been part of this process would recognize that although we have been asked to deliver in terms of time and effort and intellect and whatever, that we're doing it for a very just cause. Because moments like these only come once. And this is the time for us to provide the leadership, but then also to ask Barbadians to be engaged in this process engage in the process of adjustment that is confronting us. Thank you. Thank you for having us.